All right. So I thought it would be fun that we move into the territory of tasks because estate planning means getting some tasks done. Because in order to create basic estate planning documents, we've got to create some notes or lists about very important information. So let's take the example of a married couple to start off kind of easy peasy. So what I would ask a married couple to do is to list out their assets, assets that each owns individually or that they own together. So what that means is that each of the two are going to brainstorm and think about what each owns and what the couple owns together. Most often, I see some scratching of you know heads, some kind of looking at each other. Do we still own that? Did we sell that? Did we change that? Is it still with that bank? I, I thought that was different there. Am I on that deed? And it's so interesting because we all go through our lives and we kind of just accept whatever, whatever, but we don't be clear on what we own as far as how each asset is titled. So titling is extremely important. And this is what I call task work, where we have to go through each asset and determine how each asset is titled. So for real estate, what does the deed say? How is the deed titled? Was deed purchased before the marriage? Maybe even it was purchased when there was a relationship, but you were not married. Or maybe one of the two purchased the real estate and the other is not even on the deed at this point in time. So we need to get clear about real estate and how it's titled. I would ask as well that you get copies of your recorded deeds. Now, oftentimes I can get copies from the clerk's office or from the title company, but if you have copies of recorded deeds at home, get those out and start putting them in a pile so you can create a, a notebook of important information, important documents, and start using that moving forward. Now, just like real estate, all other assets are titled in some fashion. So bank accounts, investment accounts, bonds. Want to look at beneficiary designations on retirement accounts. You want to look at business interests and you want to see what is going on with any business interests. Do we just have a DBA here doing business as, nothing formal? Is there a partnership? If so, is there a partnership agreement? Are you a 100% owner of an LLC? Are you a partial owner of an LLC? Do you have the legal documents showing exactly what you own? Is that what you thought you own? Is there something else that you're thinking is out there? Are you a uh, shareholder? in a closely held corporation. These are the things that really do make people kind of scratch their heads. You go, geez, I'm not sure, I don't remember, where's the document? So it's a lot of big work and little work in the sense that you have to be clear on what you have, which means you've got to go to the source and see what the source says from deeds, recorded deeds to the actual bank statements. You may even have to go to the bank and inquire with the bank showing just uh, John, but I thought, you know, I was on the account as well as a joint account owner. Can you check that bank representative? And from there, continuing on, we've got to know exactly what the couple owns and how each asset is titled. 
So I say this is task work because this is the stuff that is going to make life better moving forward, just as far as knowing what you have and planning. And then going forward from there, you can start to make other arrangements. You might want to retitle assets. You might want to add a joint account owner. You might want to take away a joint account owner. You might want to add a beneficiary designation, change a beneficiary designation. But it's task oriented because, you know, you can't just uh, skip over this part and it is a lot of hands on work. Okay. And I think that couples could use a coach in this area where, you know, you just get both on the same page and or let's say one's more reluctant to talk than the other or, you know, you just kind of want to glance over things or you don't want to talk about the inheritance monies that are now over in this account and what do we do with those. There's a whole host of kind of big and little reasons why this alone can be, you know, not the most fun of things to do as a couple, but hey, you know, you're a couple and this is needed. This is life. We've got to know what you own individually and as a couple, and let's try and have a little fun with it. So maybe you can create something where you say, if you know we do this work, we'll go out to dinner, or let's spend an hour here and an hour there, and then we'll, you know, do something fun or, or whatever it may be. If you can start making this on your to-do list, yes, it is a task, some work to do. But at the end of the day, try and have some fun with it. Maybe reward yourself with it. Now, along with each asset and how each asset is titled and or any beneficiary designations on each asset, you want to think about values. What do you think are the approximate values for each asset? Now, some may fluctuate quite a bit. Others you don't know. Others, you know, you're just going to have to really estimate. But I want everyone to start getting a handle on what they own. And as a couple, be on the same page about what you own. It is so interesting how we don't really like to talk about these things. And some assets more than others, you know, oh, what is that property in Florida that we never talk about? What about that vacant land? What are we doing with it? Or what is the value of it? Or is it increasing in value? And having at least a handle of work, you know, some kind of talking points as far as values go between a couple can bring up a lot of other ideas and issues and planning. So one, it's just going to be helpful as a couple to understand where you're at. Two, it's going to be helpful as far as thinking about plans moving forward. And three, you really do need to know what you own. It's part of everything that you're doing in regard to planning. You need to know what you have and it's also a way of assessing that you've got the ability to do this kind of work, that you really know what you have and what it requires as far as getting these documents in order and having the right people in place to help you. And that's with the power of attorney, where there's somebody who's going to help during your life, if needed, with financial matters. And upon your passing, when you have an executor who's going to come and handle anything passing through the estate. And as well, it can bring up other issues such as, whoa, geez, you know, I bought that house for 50,000, that vacation house, and now it's worth, you know, 300,000. I've got to think about tax planning because if I just gift that to somebody, that's going to be a problem as far as when they go to sell and some capital gains that they may have to pay. So what's a better way to plan for that particular asset? Maybe I want to then put it into a trust and we can talk about tax planning. Uh, so there's various issues that can come up in regard to thinking about values. Now, you're also going to think about any debts that you each own and jointly have. So list out any debts and what the approximate value of each debt, whether it's a mortgage or medical debt or student loans or just whatever it may be, put that down. And you know, I've run into situations, again, where couples are not on the same page here. And let's say even one of the two owns a business and the other 
has no understanding that within that business, there's a business loan, but it's personally guaranteed. And boy, does that change the game. So we've got to get out this critical information. And I just think that so much can be done in this realm where people are putting together information and understanding it's a bit of a task, but it has to be done. No getting away from it, unless you want to glance over things or really not be beneficial for yourself and for your loved ones. So again, we're thinking of assets, we're thinking of debts, we're thinking about how assets are titled, approximate values, we're thinking about planning opportunities, same thing with debts, we're thinking about debts that we have, approximate values, any kind of important information that must be brought out. We cannot hide any longer that, let's say, a business debt was personally guaranteed or that we still owe so much money on, you know, whatever it may, may be, or we did uh, borrow some money from so-and-so and they're expecting us to pay that back. Um, it's just so important that we don't shy away from this information and we get it out. Now, what might seem kind of strange to say is that we want to have basic information on each person, name, address, phone number, email, and any names that either was formally known by. There was a divorce. When was that divorce? Can we just get that down now so we can be clear about things? Uh, obviously, we just don't want to be hiding any information slash sometimes people just don't really realize or forget about certain things and we want to get that information out now. And then, of course, we're thinking about any children between the two. In my mind right now, I'm just thinking of a very easy situation where we have a couple and they're married. And if there's any kids, it's kids between the two, because otherwise we have other considerations. But certainly as a couple, you're getting out basic information on each person. And again, when I say basic information, let's say a person's name is Charlie, you're not writing down Charles because this is just important information that once it starts being put down in an improper way, starts to get a life of its own. And then all of a sudden I will see, you know, the deed says this, but the will says that, but the life insurance says this, but you know, we just want to try and have everything very organized to the extent that it's going to be helpful when needed. Uh, just even as far as phone numbers go, very helpful to have the phone number that most often is going to be used and put that down. This is you know, cell phone. But let's say there's a real good chance that the business phone number is another way to get a hold of this person. Put that down, but put, you know, business phone. Or if somebody still has, you know, a landline at home, then, you know, and that's being used, put that down. So basic information. Just get that down and be very clear about it. I had a person who was known by different names as far as a last name goes. And to be honest, you know, these are the things that can just trip people up, even though they're so basic. So get it down, be very clear about it, and be intentional about putting it down correctly. All right. Now, as a couple, when you can get down this kind of information, it is going to be extremely helpful moving forward. And what I would suggest is that you get out some kind of folder, binder, whatever it may be, where you can start putting this information in. So copies of deeds, notes, you know, went to the bank, confirmed, joint account, um, next time we order checks, make sure both names are showing on the joint account or confirmed with life insurance representative, the alternate beneficiary designation is so-and-so. Whatever it may be, you're going to start using this binder or folder or whatever it is to start keeping notes, keeping copies of documents. Maybe you would have some original documents there. 
but we want to have a place now where we can continue to co go back to to pick up where we left off and to kind of keep this running dialogue of actions that we're taking, thoughts that we have, and important notes. Then you want to think about between the couple basic estate planning documents. Do you have any currently in place? If so, you need to get those out. You need to get the originals. You need to see who may also have either originals or attorney certified copies or even copies. If it, let's say it's a power of attorney, we need to know, is there somebody that we need to inform that that power of attorney has been revoked? We're doing a new one. Or same thing with the healthcare proxy. If there is a will, we need to know who has the original will. Is it filed with surrogates court? Is it at home? Does somebody else have it? Does an attorney have it? We need to try and get our hands on that original because we're doing a new one. Of course, if you have no documents and you're just starting for the first time, then you can clearly note that there's nothing else out there that can affect what you want to do now. If there are any other documents that could affect what you're doing now, uh, you know, a prenuptial agreement, postnuptial agreement, if there was a divorce, is there was there a separation agreement uh, or divorce decree, these are the things that will affect what you can and should do now. Um, was there a buy-sell agreement in regard to a business? Do you have the operating agreement for, let's say, an LLC or the uh, other appropriate documents for any kind of business interest? Do you have copies of deeds? Um, you know, can you clearly state that you have certain things in order so that when it's questioned later on, you know, you can refer right back to the documents? So uh, let's see, basic estate planning documents, we're talking about will, power attorney, healthcare proxy. If you can start to, in your minds as a couple, think about a general picture as far as the people that would be helpful for you, both during your life and upon your passing, and what it typically may look like as far as your assets go. How do you want your assets to go? And you don't have to be uh, too overly specific at this point, but as a couple, if you have a shorter discussion, it's going to be that much more helpful when you go to talk to your estate planning attorney. In other words, who would we like to help out in the event both of us can't act? So if we're both in a car accident and we have to make sure the mortgage is paid, the utility bills are paid, our tax returns are filed, whatever it may be. Who's going to be the alternate agent or agents named in the power of attorney document? That's the person or persons who can help with financial matters. Now, typically, and I'm saying typically, and I'm imagining the scenario is just being, you know, a couple, there's no you know, crazy issue as far as each other coming in. We're doing joint representation here as far as representing both of them in this estate planning. They're both on the same page. Nothing crazy at this point. So typically it would be that one spouse appoints the other as the agent to act on behalf of the spouse. Now, if we're dealing with a couple who's, we're getting concerned about some health issues or Perhaps there's something cognitively that we're starting to get worried about that could change. Maybe we would have an adult child also as an agent with the other parent, or maybe we would just go right to the adult child. It just depends on the situation there. But certainly there's going to be a discussion about having the agent, the primary agent, to, as the spouse and the alternate, or sometimes we say successor agent or agents to be, and this is where you're going to talk a little bit between yourselves. Do you have any adult children that you would trust to be in this role? Um, and we're going to start fleshing out some of the concerns and issues that you may have, but at least having some kind of a discussion between the two of you, geez, I think, you know, our adult son would be perfect here. What do you think? Well, he lives out of town and I'm not sure. And what about, you know, he's so, he's so busy with his work and the kids and just start having some general discussions about people you want to rely on if needed. 
And right now we just talked about agent under power of attorney. The next one would be the agent in your healthcare proxy. In my case, agent under your healthcare proxy slash living will. And so you're thinking about who's going to be able to make medical decisions, can communicate with the doctors, medical health professionals when you cannot. So again, we're assuming it's going to be spouse, maybe not, but spouse first. And then we have who else is next? Is it adult child? Is it sibling? You know, each person may be different as far as who they would then want to make those medical decisions on their behalf. And then as far as the will goes, I think it's helpful for people, for couples, to have just a little bit of a discussion about where each stands right now. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Oh, well, of course, to the kids in equal shares. Oh, of course, to, you know, half to my side, half to your side, you know, whatever it may be. See how much it's, how easy it is for you to kind of just get those general thoughts out. Or are you already at a point where, geez, you know, I just, I don't know. I don't know what we should do here. But at least it's going to be helpful to know that you either are very clear about what you're thinking or there's some snags that you just don't know what to do with, even at this point. It could be anything as far as that goes. And then you're going to think about who would be the person to nominate as the executor. And then you would have an alternate, perhaps another alternate, and so on. So if we take a step back, we're thinking about, we have a married couple, we're basically on the same page. We're just trying to get out important information so that we can get those basic estate planning documents in order. Step one is task oriented in the sense that we're getting out information so that each of the two is on the same page about what we're dealing with here with assets and with debts and then having a little bit of a discussion about who are the helpers, who's going to help and be in the documents and named in certain roles. So I think I'm gonna stop here. I just wanted to start to get out this idea that we want to roll our sleeves up and start doing some things to gear us forward and get some action as opposed to just listening to things over and over again and never doing anything. So whether it's you live in a, another state and I'll never see you here locally where I try and help people, that's okay. I hope that it's just a video here to help you take a little bit of action to move you from doing nothing to doing something. And then of course, if you're here locally, I'm in the Western New York area, then of course, uh, perhaps, we would uh, be a good fit as far as being able to help you. I do enjoy working with people who enjoy rolling up their sleeves and getting this, this type of uh, very important information out so that we can get things prepared in the right way. We can't go to doing documents without having some groundwork laid out in front of us. And this is what this is intended to help you with is get some of that groundwork done. And as I've said before, this isn't just to get those documents done. This should help you. This should help you think about, geez, you know, why don't I close that account? Why don't I open up something else? Uh, what do I think about this uh, money sitting in this type of an account? Should I do something different? Should I reach out to a realtor? Because, you know, maybe it is time to sell that property in another state or, or whatever it may be. This is a fantastic opportunity, not just to get estate planning documents in order, but to think about what else it is that is going on that can be helpful. And it's so many things, right? From the assets themselves to the people in your life, to you know what you're thinking about for the future and so many types of other actions can be done. I do wanna say one more time to think about that binder or folder or whatever it is, because I know how it goes. It's so fun to start, you know, 
writing something or you have a thought, you don't do anything with it, just try and have a place where you put things. And this includes copies of documents. And just keep trying to go back to that spot and put things down because all of a sudden you'll start realizing, geez, I'm doing some good work here. I'm getting some things done. I feel so much better now. All right. So I hope this was helpful. This is Ruth George with Ruth P. George Law, PLLC, Trust and Estate Attorney. This video, as with any video I do put out, is for educational purposes only. It does not establish an attorney-client relationship. And I look forward to seeing you on another video.